last part of this section then deals with kind of more complicated expressions where I have to distribute over parentheses to get rid of those and be able to simplify. So we want to go back and talk about those um, rules again for the order of operation. So when more than one kind of grouping symbol occurs, what has to happen? We do the computations in the innermost ones first. Innermost. Then work from the inside out. So eat the ooey gooey soft cinnamon roll before you go eat the, the crunchier ones on the outside. So let's practice. So that first example, we need to work on the innermost grouping. So we need to add 12 and 3 together first. So 12 plus 3 gives me 15. Got rid of one set of my parentheses. Now we need to work on the inside of these. If I combine 4 minus 15, we're looking at minus 11. And since we didn't explicitly say a multiplication out there, it's implied with those parentheses, so we still have to group them together, but again, we've simplified on the inside. So this result is negative 22. All right. Second one, again, working from the innermost, then to the outside, then even larger than that. So if I'm combining uh, 13 minus 6, what are we looking at on the inside there? 7. So again, we worked on the innermost. Now we'll look a little bit larger. Combining 8 minus 7, what are we left with? 1. Subtraction, we can go straight across. We're left with 8. In this next example, we have three different groupings. So again, we can work on the innermost in each chunk as we're working individually. So combining my insides here, 5 and 2 gives me 7 altogether. And I need to work on the innermost portion of this grouping inside of a grouping. So 8 and 6 together gives us 14. So we can keep evaluating each chunk as we go. So multiplying, this is going to be 28. I'm subtracting 7. And I'm subtracting off what value here? A minus 9. So minus a minus is going to become a plus. So what are we looking at? All together, we've got 30. So work from the inside to the outside. Go ahead and take the try. Simplify as far as you can go. So what did you have to do first? We need to distribute on the inside of each of these chunks to get rid of the parentheses and the innermost portion. So what are we looking at? 5 times y will give 5y. 5, 5 times 2 will give us 10. So we got rid of the parentheses on the inside. And we'll do the same over here. 3 to each term. We'll get rid of our parentheses there. And what do we have to distribute in this case? The constant negative 6 to each of them. So minus 6y plus 18. And now I need to ask, do these parentheses or these grouping symbols matter in this case? It's just a one on the front, so no. We can drop those. But over here doesn't matter. Yeah, because I need to distribute that negative into everything if I'm going to get rid of the parentheses. So minus 3x as I distribute, minus 6 plus 6y minus 18. So now we can combine our like terms together. How many factors of y do I have? I've got 5 and 6 will give me 11. I have negative 4x and negative 3x, so I have minus 7x. And 10 minus 6 will give us 4. 4 minus 18 will give us minus 14. Awesome. So again, work from the innermost out. So just to kind of sum it up again, that the rules for the orders of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. What does it mean? Do all of the calculations inside of the grouping symbols first, before operations outside. Evaluate all exponential expressions. 
Then what two operations do we do together? Multiplication and division from left to right. Then lastly, addition and subtraction from left to right. So the cool part about the rules for operation, these are the same order, this is the same order that a computer goes in, a calculator when you input numbers, how we do it by hand, everything in the world computes mathematics in the same exact order. That's how we end up with the same answers universally when we're working on a problem. Pretty crazy. So we'll just practice some more. Work with the orders of operation. So what has to happen first in that first example, part A? Multiplication needs to happen first, so I'm going to throw some grouping around there so I know what I'm evaluating first when I look back later. So negative 24 times 16 gives me negative 384, and I'm subtracting 7 from that. So all together we have what? Negative 391. For part B, 25 divided by a negative 5 plus 100 divided by negative 10. So what has to happen first? My division, anything that I'm dividing needs to come before addition. So I need to compute what's inside of those parentheses first. So what do we got coming out? 25 divided by negative 5 gives us negative 5, and I'm adding what results from inside of these parentheses. 10, or 100, excuse me, divided by negative 10 gives us plus minus 10. So plus or minus is really like subtraction. What do we get out of there? Minus 15. So again, our order of operation tells us we have to compute what first? We're getting on the inside of the parentheses. And inside of there, which part do we have to compute first? This multiplication. So as we're going, we can kind of compute in parts. I can simplify each term as I'm going before I start adding and subtracting. So we'll kind of do a few in one step. So what is that first term telling us? Is that negative 2 cubed or just the negative of 2 cubed? So our second option, I'm taking 2 cubing it, then making it negative at the end. So 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 will give me minus 8. If I compute 21 times 3, we're looking at 63. Now I'm working on the inside. 27 is going to change, and I'm subtracting 4. So what do we have in here? Negative 8 plus 63. You can do it two different ways. You can combine these two together, or you could distribute your negative into each of them. So you could have subtracted uh, 23, or we could distribute minus 27 plus 4. Whatever way will get you there. Doesn't really matter. All together, we're left with 32. So again, order does matter on the inside of the parentheses. Exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So let's look at a few more complicated cases. So up in my numerator, it's all division, so I can just go straight across with that guy. And down below, we have to evaluate these exponents first. So let's just calculate what's going on down here. I'm going to leave this for later. And... What is 2 cubed again? We saw it earlier, but this time it's positive. 8. And we're subtracting 3 squared, which is 9. So all together in the denominator, I'm going to be left with negative 1. And what about up in the numerator? What are we going to have? So negative 24 divided by 6 is going to give you what? Minus 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 will give us a positive 2. So what answer are we going to have in the end? What is this equivalent to? Minus 2. Again, we can assign the negative to the top or to the bottom. Anything divided by 1 is just itself, so we can simplify to this nice form. We want to see negative numbers 
written like that. So go ahead and take these two tries. Simplify them as far as you can go using those order of operation rules. So what did you have to compute in the first one? Up in the numerator, we have to do subtraction last. So we need to work on the inside here. So I'm looking at 5 minus 8 minus 7. And we can evaluate in the denominator a little bit as we go. So again, 2 cubed exponents are first. I'm adding 9 minus 2. So what are we looking at? 5 minus 1 up in the top. And I have 17 minus 2, if we're just working left to right in the denominator. So all together we have 4 fifteenths. And can we simplify any farther there? They don't have anything in common that I can take out of both. Last one. So negative of 5 squared is going to give us minus 25. I can compute the multiplication together. 43 times 4 is 172. And again, 2 cubed is what? 8. So now we can just go left to right down there. Up there, excuse me. Now what about down here? 4 squared is 16. And what am I subtracting off? I have to do this division first before I do the subtraction. So 20 divided by 4 will give me 5. So up top we're left with 155. And down below, 11. And again, we can't simplify any farther because they don't share anything in common that we can take out. 